Hey guys, Brett from Kitchen Table Commander here, back with another deck tech. This time I'm trying something different and building a deck around a legendary creature from the upcoming set Guilds of Ravnica. This time it's Tajik Legion's Edge, one of anything, one red and one white for a 3-2 with haste. He also has Mentor, the new Boros mechanic, which when Tajik attacks gives a plus one plus one counter to another attacking creature with less power. Tajik's third ability is prevent all non-combat damage that would be dealt to other creatures you control. And lastly, he can give himself first strike until end of turn for one red and one white mana. Anyway, this deck is all about making sure you can take advantage of the mentor mechanic and keeping your creatures safe from non-combat damage. Let's get right into it. To be able to properly take advantage of Mentor, we need two things. Small creatures and a way to keep making Tajik more and more powerful. I'll start by covering the small creatures part. We have multiple ways of making small token creatures that we can buff with Mentor. Obviously, being in white, we have to include Anointed Procession to double all the tokens being generated. And obviously, being in white, we have Secure the Wastes. It's good early game to get a board presence, and it's great late game as a mana sink. Marshall Coup gives us soldier tokens, but can also act as a board wipe if we start running into problems. Mobilization gives all our soldiers vigilance, and for two in a white, we can make a 1-1 one, one white soldier soldier creature token. Synergy. Handwear Garrison is a 2-3 that when it attacks makes two 1-1 one, one red human creature tokens tapped and attacking. If you've got Handwear Battlements and a few extra mana, you've got Handwear the Writhing Township, a 7-4 with Trample and Haste, that when it attacks makes two 3-2 Eldrazi Horror creature tokens tapped and attacking. Elspeth Sun's Champion makes three 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens with her plus one, destroys all creatures with power four or greater with her minus three, and gives you an emblem with creatures you control get plus two plus two and flying with her minus seven. Assemble the Legion makes an ever-increasing number of 1-1 one, one red and white soldier creature tokens with haste. When you have a huge board drop, deploy to the front to make as many 1-1 soldier tokens as there are creatures on the battlefield. Great if your opponent is also a token deck. Along those same lines, launch the fleet gives any creature the ability to create a 1-1 white soldier token, tapped in attacking when it attacks, and if you have lots of mana, you can do it to all your creatures for one mana of any color for each creature after the first. Hero of Bladehold makes two 1-1 white soldier creature tokens tapped in attacking when she attacks, plus she pumps the team when attacking. Heroic Reinforcements make two 1-1 white soldier creature tokens and gives all your creatures plus one plus one in haste until end of turn. Captain of the Watch gives all your soldiers plus one plus one in vigilance, and when she enters the battlefield she brings three one one white soldier creature tokens with her. Have I said tokens enough? Have I said tokens too much? Are you even listening at this point? Okay, well if you're still with me, I'm moving on. Obviously we want to make sure we can keep triggering Tajik's mentor ability, and that means we need to make sure that he has greater power than other creatures we control. To do that we have Armory of Iroas equip their armory to Tajik, and every time he attacks he gets another plus one plus one counter. In case our opponents don't like the armory, we have Stoneforge Masterwork to add plus one plus one counters for each creature that shares a creature type with Tajik. Considering most of our tokens are soldiers or humans, that should be a lot. Dowsing Dagger gives Tajik a boost of power, and if you connect with a player, it helps your mana base. Scourge of the Nobilis is a no-brainer. Attach it to Tajik, and he gets both the bonuses since he is both red and white creature. He gets plus two plus two in lifelink, with the added ability of paying red or white hybrid mana to give himself another plus one plus oh until end of turn. While we are on the subject of buffing creatures, we have to talk about cards that buff the whole team. Cards like Balefire Liege, giving all your other red creatures plus one plus one and giving all your other white creatures plus one plus one. When you cast a red spell it deals three damage to target player, and when you cast a white spell it gains you three life. Along the same lines we have Legion's Initiative. Red creatures you control get plus one plus oh, and white creatures you control get plus oh plus one. And for one red, one white, and exile it, you exile all creatures you control, then they come back at the beginning of the next combat under their owner's control and gain haste until end of turn. Gleam of Battle gives each attacking creature you control a plus one plus one counter each time it attacks. Yep, that's it. Seems dees. Glory of Warfare to give your creatures plus two plus oh on your turn, or plus oh plus two when it's not. Vanquisher's Banner naming soldiers to give all your soldiers a boost and to draw cards every time you cast one. Jorkadeen the Prevailer so that you can take advantage of your artifacts, giving all your creatures plus three plus oh as long as you control three or more. Aurelia Exemplar of Justice as another source for Mentor, but also to be able to give Tajik another boost to power and give him Trample and Vigilance. Last is Perforos, God of the Forge. Given how many tokens we're going to be making, it makes perfect sense to include good old Perf. Two damage every time a creature enters the battlefield can just flat out win you the game. Plus his last ability gives us the ability to buff the power of all our creatures for two and a red. If you want to make this deck a bit more budget, you can leave Perforos out since he's the most expensive card in the deck. Just know that the power level will suffer a bit. Given that Tajik is going to be getting bigger and so is our team, we want to be able to protect him as much as possible. So to do that, we are running Dark Steel Plate to make him indestructible. I know, playing against indestructible isn't fun, but it's fun from this side. We're also including Swiftfoot Boots to give him Hexproof and another instance of Haste, so basically just to give him hexproof. Of course, we have Lightning Greaves. I figured you probably were already thinking it, but I wanted to slow roll it. The Greaves gives us the ability to protect Tajik, but also be able to instant speed protect any other creatures our opponents might be targeting with removal. Speaking of removal, we have a pretty complicated package with this deck. 
Given that Tajik prevents non-combat damage, we need a few spells that help with the combat damage side of things. So we've got Master Warcraft to basically take your opponent's combat phase for them. Being able to decide attackers and blockers and how they block is insanely powerful. Attack with their most annoying creatures, probably ones they've been holding back to keep safe, then block and kill them. It's not the most elegant spell, but it sure is hilarious to see your opponent's face as you decide their fate. Ride down helps if your opponent's chumped your attack. Destroy the creature they blocked with and give your creature trample to make sure most of the damage gets through. Arrows of Justice and Fire at Will deal damage to attacking or blocking creatures. The arrows does 4 damage to a single creature, which could help get rid of a big threat, where Fire at Will can spread the damage around, possibly getting rid of a few token creatures your opponents kept just to block with. I'm looking at you, Merith. We're also running the obvious Boros Charm and the new Deafening Clarion. The charm gives us great options at instant speed, deal 4 damage to a player, make all your permanents indestructible, and target creature gains double strike until end of turn. All very useful abilities. Deafening Clarion deals 3 damage to each creature or gives all your creatures lifelink until end of turn, with the option of doing both. Aurelia's Fury deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of creatures or players, plus it taps any creature dealt damage and prevents any player damage from casting non-creature spells. Pay 1 for each of your opponent's tokens and you've cleared the board. Pay one for each opponent, and you've given yourself a turn without having to worry about counter spells or board wipes. Deflecting Palm and Captain's Maneuvers both deflect damage, combat or otherwise. Deflecting Palm redirects all damage to the controller of the source of your choice, where Captain's Maneuvers gives you a bit more flexibility in that you can decide how much of the damage gets redirected and to where. Do you want to kill something of theirs that's been just out of reach? Or maybe you just want to send a message and slap a player in the face. It doesn't even have to be the player dealing damage, which is just funny. Intimidation Bolt is here to prevent your opponent from attacking at all. Deal 3 damage to something you don't like, and it prevents all their other creatures from attacking this turn. Desperate Stand gives a single creature plus 2 plus 0 oh, first strike and vigilance, or late game it can give it to all your creatures provided you have enough Boros mana. And last we have Shattering Blow and Wear Tear to destroy pesky artifacts or enchantments. You know which ones I'm talking about. Let's move on to creatures not already mentioned. Most of them are smaller creatures that we can buff with the mentor mechanic, but others just have so much value I had to include them. Creatures like Aurelia the War Leader. What's better than one mentor trigger a turn? Two mentor triggers a turn. Let's be honest, you knew this was going to be an aggressive deck. We're Boros after all. Boros Reckoner to redirect damage to whatever we want. Bruce Tarl to give a creature double strike and lifelink until end of turn, every turn. I knew I'd find a use for Bruce. Fire Main Avenger, Frontline Medic, Tajik Blade of the Legion, and Wojak Halberdiers. For the Battalion Triggers, the Avenger to deal 3 damage to target creature or player and gain you 3 life. The Medic to give your creatures indestructible and possibly counter a spell. Tajik pumps himself, and the Halberdiers gain first strike. Foundry Champion to do massive damage late game when you have huge board, plus it can pump itself when necessary. Gazella Blade of Gold Knight doubles damage to an opponent or their permanents and halves the damage done to you or your permanents. Iroas God of Victory gives your creatures menace and prevents all damage done to creatures you attack with. Leonon Abanas gives your artifacts hexproof. Audric Master Tactician gives you the option of which creatures block your attack and how those blocks happen. Basically another copy of Master Warcraft. Stun Sniper to either tap down a threat or kill off small tokens. And then we have Boros Recruit, Boros Swiftblade, Ceridon Yearling, Iroas Champion, Sky Knight Legionnaire, Sky Terror, and Swiftblade Vindicator, because vanilla is boring. All these creatures have keywords that make them better the larger you pump them with Tajik's ability, but aren't dependent on getting the counters. They're just good on their own. Our land base is pretty simple since we are only two colors. We have the obvious includes like Boros Guildgate, Boros Garrison, Clifftop Retreat, and Inspiring Vantage as our dual lands. Command Tower, Opal Palace, and Unclaimed Territory for color fixing. Opal Palace also gives Tajik counters the more times we've cast him. And we're also running Blighted Step to gain a ton of life off our token generation. A Mary the Sky Ruin to bring creatures back from the graveyard. Homeward Path in case our opponents play cards like Blatant Thievery or Act of Treason. Slayer Stronghold and Sun Home Fortress of the Legion to give any creature vigilance and haste or double strike respectively. Kairu because, well, why not? Vivid Crag and Vivid Meadow to give you either color you might be missing. Evolving Wilds in case you just haven't gotten a basic you need. And of course we have a Soul Ring because what commander deck isn't complete without one? Top it off with 12 planes and 9 mounts and there you have it. One Tajik Legion's Edge commander deck. Well that about does it for today, I'd love to hear what you guys think about this deck in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know the second I upload a new video. As always, you can find me on Twitter, at Kitchen Table Command, and on Instagram, at Kitchen Table Commander. If you want to support the channel, consider becoming a patron over on our Patreon. I'll leave a link in the description. It's been a blast, and we'll see you in the next video.